now in the library room celebrating a wonderful dinner. Uh, all the vintners here, or many, three vintners here, I think, from uh, Napa Valley. Yep. And Jerry, you were you promised to share with us some of your uh, food and wine pairing tips from Berenger Vineyards. Hmm, some of your secrets. One of the goals in my life as far as food and wine pairing is, is the KISS theory. Is the what oh, theory? KISS theory, that sounds Keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's a good one, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> I think we get so involved with the emotion and tradition of food and wine pairing, that we lose, it, it is truly really simple. Yeah. And with my background as a chef, I was a chef for Behringer Vineyards 10 years, mm -hmm. and I've written on food and wine pairing. And yeah. We've had some fun playing around with our food and wine. Yes. yes. But the simplicity of it is, you can really look at most food uh -huh. as being wine friendly. Okay. And you select the wine that you enjoy drinking, mm -hmm. and most food is gonna taste delicious with it. There's a rare extremes. Yes. When I involve um, too much sweetness in a dish, it might be a fruit salsa like on a fish, it might be like a sweet and sour sauce, okay. then I would want to generally serve a wine that has sweetness to it yes. or at least no oak. So okay. that's pretty simple, right? Yeah. If it's sweet, serve it with sweet. Right. And if you don't so like with like kind yeah, yeah, yeah. of thing, right? Because yeah. I mean, there are some philosophies out there, like with like, but what about opposites attract? We hear that a lot too. Well, in that extreme, that is going to go with that other uh, degree of food I was just mentioning. Okay. Because believe it or not, when a, a dish is food friend, a wine friendly, mm -hmm. I don't care if I'm having a roast prime rib and I want to have it with Beringer Napa Valley Chardonnay. Yes. If I like Chardonnay and I like prime rib, right. I'm going to like them together. Most yes, people wouldn't think true. that would work though, like red meat with a, with a white wine. And that's why I say keep it simple, stupid, because we're thinking too much. We are. That's if true. you enjoy it. we should drink more. <laughs> But it's also in the preparation of the dish as well, it right? It can be, that and that's why I say the extremes change it. Mm -hmm. If there's sweetness involved, or if we take an extreme situation, like we all like a lot of seafood, yes. and we all like a, a maybe almost an Asian type of dish, maybe like sushi, yes, or steamed lobster. Oh. These type of seafoods are almost unadulterated. At that point? Yes. <laughs> really? <laughs> Where are okay. we going with this, Karen? I love working with you guys. I blush constantly. What have you paired this evening with the Chardonnay? What, what, what are we going to be enjoying this evening with this, this glass of wine? Um, the chefs tonight have prepared a seafood dish. I haven't eaten their food before. Okay. So what I am relying on is that in most high-quality restaurants, like the Fairmont's going to have, mm -hmm. yes. the chefs are pretty uh, schooled on fundamentals. Fundamental of wine and food pairing. Well, not necessarily that. No? Fundamentals okay. of good food. Ah. And ah. what makes good food taste good is proper seasoning. When the food has proper seasoning, it's going to make my wine taste delicious. Uh -huh. okay. And I'm pretty much counting on the chefs here know how to cook. Yes. Uh -huh. So I'm betting the dishes are going to be delicious and delicious with our Chardonnay. Well, and I have to tell you, the first course is now being served, so we better sit down uh -oh. and enjoy. Uh-oh. I don't like upset chefs. Uh, oh, let's have a toast. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. It's a great evening. Thanks, Jerry. Mm -hmm.